Hello guys, welcome you back to the practical session of field practices in agricultural engineering. Today we are going to demonstrate you on the practical determination of atabolic limits. The atabolic limit is defined as a basic measure of critical water content in a fine grained soil. They are liquid limit, plastic limit and shrinkage limit. Depending on its water content, a soil can be present in four physical states such as solid, semi-solid, plastic and liquid. The boundaries between these states were defined based on the changes in clay's behavior by a Swedish scientist named Albert Atterberg. When the liquid state soil is dried, there comes a point where the soil becomes stiff or a plastic. It means it is no longer able to flow freely like a fluid. The boundary water content at this point is identified as the liquid limit. Therefore, the liquid limit is present between the liquid and the plastic state soil. When the drying process is continued, the liquid state soil is converted into the plastic state soil. At this stage, it can be molded into desired shapes without any cracks or ruptures. But when further it is dried, it is converted to semi-solid state where it cannot be molded into desired shapes without cracking. The boundary water content at which the soil changes from plastic to semi-solid is identified as the plastic limit. Therefore, the plastic limit is present in between the plastic and the semi-solid state of the soil. When the drying process is continued, there comes a final state where there is no longer any change occurs in the volume and the water present is completely removed is identified as the solid state. The boundary water content when soil changes from semi-solid to solid state is identified as the shrinkage limits. The determination of atomic limit is highly significant in the construction, agriculture as well as the pottery industry. When we consider the construction of buildings or the dams, the strength as well as the deformation of soil material is considered. In case of a liquid state soil, it has the largest deformation and the lowest strength and vice versa in the solid state soil. Let's see what are the lab equipments that we need to carry out this practical. First we need liquid limit device which is also called as Casagrande apparatus. Then we need grooving tools, wash bottles with the distilled water in it, porcelain evaporating pans, mortar and pestle, spatula, balance, seal number 22, moisture can, glass plate. Other than that, we need desiccators and the drying oven. It is very important to calibrate this device before the test begin. First, we need to place the grooving tool underneath the cup. Rotate the handle so that the can just contact the cup. Loosen the set screw on the top and then adjust the back screw until the cup touches the can. Finally, we have to thoroughly clean up the cup. First, we need to take a soil sample with the weight of 200 grams and clean them out for roots, rocks and other particles. Then, we have to Seal the soil samples with the seal number 22 which has 0.71 millimeter hole and make sure to repeat the procedure until the whole soil sample passes through the seal. Mix the air dried soil sample thoroughly with the distilled water and until it makes the uniform test.
place an appropriate portion of the paste in the cup of the liquid limit device and smooth the surface off to a maximum depth of 1.25 cm. And draw the grooving tool through the sample along the symmetrical axis of the cup, holding the tool perpendicular to the cup at the point of contact. Then turn the crank at a rate of about 2 revolutions per second and count the blows necessary to close the groove in the soil for a distance of 1.25 cm. When a consistent value in the range of 10 to 40 blows has been obtained, take approximately 10 gram of soil from near the closed groove for a water content determination. Mix a sample in the cup and repeat the steps above until the number of blows required to close the gap is approximately the same until the difference is about 2 to 3 blows and record the number of blows. Repeat the test at different water contents for terminal blows ranging from 10 to 40. This way, you can record data, number of blows required to cross the groove at different water contents. Then, the results of liquid determination are plotted in semilograph water content in arithmetic scale versus number of blows in logarithmic scale. Finally, the liquid limit, which is the water content at which the groove cut into soil, is closed by 25 blows can be found using the graph. Now we are going to determine the plastic limit of the particular soil. First, we need to mix the soil sample about 50 gram with distilled water. Then we have to roll the soil on a glass plate with the hand until it is 3 mm in diameter. Repeat these steps until a 3 mm diameter thread shows signs of crumbling. Take some of the crumbling material for water content determination. Repeat the previous steps to obtain three determinations and take the average moisture content is reported as a plastic limit of the particular soil. This way, we can record data. By taking the average of replicates, we can find the plastic limit of soil. Plasticity index can be numerically calculated by the difference of liquid limit and the plastic limit. Plasticity index shows the size of the range of moisture content at which the soil remains plastic. In general, the plasticity index depends only on the amount of clay present. It indicates the finesse of soil and its capacity to change shape without altering its volume.